Hello everyone, Professor Williams here with our second lecture for voice methods. So we've been talking about the posture for a bit <clears throat> and how our head, neck, shoulders, torso, thighs, knees, and toes and everything else in between needs to be malleable. It needs to be able to move freely. And that is so we are not so rigid um, during the breathing process. So, let's talk about breathing. Um, let's talk about um, how we breathe. So, let's start with, do you breathe through your nose or through your mouth? Um, I don't think it makes a difference. <laughs> Some people, um, when they breathe through their nose, they feel this cold air rushing through. But make sure that when you, if when you do that, because we all do it in whatever capacity we do, um, that things are not getting right. So we shouldn't be hearing your inhale, because every sound that we make is also still part of the music. Um, so let's try this again. Let's breathe through our nose. Good. Let's try this again and relax even these throat muscles here. Good. Now let's try breathing through our mouth in the same way. Only through your mouth. Good. Now a good thing that we want to maybe think of when we breathe through our mouth or through our nose is that surprise. So let's say, scenario, <clears throat> your friends, family are surprising you with for a surprise birthday party. You walk through the door and they say, surprise, and you're like, Good, let's do that again. So I'm gonna say surprise and let's just breathe. So, surprise. Good, yeah. Again, there's no audible sound, right? Um, and we don't want any uh, thing you know, coming in the way of our airways. We don't wanna hear, right? Because that means that the muscles are contracting. But, surprise. And you see how I'm staying up in this suspended phase. Yes, we want to, throughout the breathing cycle, pretend as though we are still inhaling. That We want that feeling of inhale, even though we may be exhaling or phonating or playing or expelling air in some kind of way. Good. Now, let's talk about um, the process of breathing. So I have two small videos that we're going to look at together now. Breathing movements. Inspiration. The pressure in the lungs is decreased and the air rushes in. The muscles of the diaphragm contract to make it descend. The rib cage moves upwards and outwards. Expiration. The pressure in lungs is increased and the air is pushed out. The diaphragm becomes dome-shaped, relaxes and moves up. Simultaneously, the ribcage moves down and in. Cool. So I like how this person um, separates it between inspiration and expiration. So... Um, so let's, let's say, uh, breathing cycle, and let's go with, um, instead of inspiration and exhalation, let's go with inhalation and exhalation. So going back to our, our video, he talks about, um, a few body parts, right? So we have the rib cage, the lungs, and let's say the pleural membrane is also, uh, the lungs as well, so... Um, and then also, everyone's favorite word to use in singing, the diaphragm. Ooh. So let's write those down. Rib cage, lungs, and diaphragm. Oh, up here. Rib cage, lungs, diaphragm. Learn how to spell it. Lovely. <laughs> um, and so, as we see... 
Um, I'm gonna mute this guy. So as we are inhaling, as we inhale, as the lungs get larger, the um, diaphragm pushes down, which also makes the rib cage move up and out, up and out. Let's look at that again. Air comes in, air comes in, lungs are inflating, pushing down on the diaphragm. The diaphragm therefore inflates the ribs and in those inter in those muscles, those intercostal muscles around the ribs to make way for more room for the lungs to expand. Also, what you are not seeing down here in the belly area or the uh, intestine area is that the belly should be distending or coming out. Great, so let's write that down. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's see, inhalation, lungs. Uh, lungs uh, let's say inhale air let's check that <laughs> air care ha in lungs okay as we inhale air in the lungs that pushes down on the diaphragm lungs push down on the diaph diaphragm Diaphragm gets um, uh, uh, pushes on the lungs. Sorry, not on the lungs. My bad. On the rib cage, and on viscera, which are your um, intestines. Great, I think we got everything. Lovely. And this is during inspiration or inhalation. Now during expiration or exhalation, pressure in the lungs increases and air is pushed out. Diaphragm relaxes and moves up. So, the lungs are getting smaller. The diaphragm is pushing up on the lungs to push the air out. Also, <clears throat> because of this action of the diaphragm, then the rib cage is contracting. So what happens first? Sometimes in singing, we'll just want to remain relaxed in our belly area so that we have the most amount of air, right? Sometimes we do want to push it out for that high note. So let's say that uh, the diaphragm relaxes first. Oh, there's an egg. Oh, there you go. <laughs> diaphragm relaxes. Um, and pushes back against the lungs. Diaphragm. Um, pushes back and relaxes rib cage. Viscera comes back in instead of distending. Good, now let's watch this other video here. And of course, these are on the um, course den in your discussion homework. Mechanics of breathing. 
Consciously take a breath and think about the fact that there are 10 different muscle groups working together to make this happen. These muscle groups include the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. The main muscle used for breathing is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped structure consisting of several large muscles, which is sandwiched between the chest cavity, containing the lungs and the rib cage, and the abdomen, containing the digestive system, including your stomach. The muscles that move the rib cage itself are the internal and external intercostal muscles. They are each attached to the ribs and run between them. To inhale air, the diaphragm contracts and moves down while the external intercostal muscles contract, forcing the rib cage up and out. The combined effect of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles increases the volume of the chest cavity and expands the lungs. This expansion of the lungs increases their volume, reducing the pressure within them, causing air to be drawn in. This action is similar to a piston sucking petrol into a car engine. In normal breathing, we use around 25% of our lung capacity, which is called our tidal volume. As you inhale deeply, the diaphragm moves further down into the abdomen, pushing your belly out, giving more room for the lungs to expand and draw in more air. This type of breathing is called belly breathing or abdominal breathing and is critical to prepare you for your free dive. Belly breathing allows you to completely fill your lungs with air. The maximum amount of air your lungs can hold is called your total lung capacity. With training, you can use... Okay, blah, blah, blah. Great. So let's go from the beginning and let's add some things. So I think a uh, word to add will be um, internal and external. Intercostal muscles. So intercostal muscles, <clears throat> if this is your rib cage, right? The mu those are the muscles right in between the bones or the muscles that you eat off those ribs, off your little piggies. All right, so, and they're like plaid. <clears throat> so you have your pectoral muscles like this and then your intercostal muscles like this, which makes this nice little plaid um, configuration going on with their musculature. And so that's why we kind of also breathe out or in our, <clears throat> in the natural, sorry, excuse me, in the natural breathing sense, those intercostal muscles are to help us to expire the air or to exhale the air, right? And so it kind of collapses. So let's add inter internal and external intercostal muscles into our discussion here. So inhalation, inhale air in lungs, mm-hmm. Diaphragm pushes on the rib cage and on viscera. Rib cage ex uh, expands through internal and external intercostal muscles. Extremal. Lovely. Now during exhalation, okay, during exhalation, <clears throat> those intercostal muscles want to go back to contracting. All right, so let's put that down. Um, diaphragm pushes back and relaxes. Rib cage by the internal and external intercostal muscles contracting. Cool. Let's look at the video again without our little British person speaking and without the music, which is amazing. All right, here we go. So, <clears throat> here we have the intercostal muscles. Actually, we'll go a little farther. Great. We have the intercostal muscles here with between your ribs. Here's our diaphragm. This bit of pink, the light pink, is your is is the lung. The dark pink is the muscle, intercostal muscle. The white is the rib cage, and this part is also the uh, diaphragm. Lovely. And so, just look at the action again, and let's let's slow it down for fun. Um, oops, that didn't slow it down. Ha <laughs> ha. 
My bad. Great. So, let's go back to see that again. So you see the lungs really do inflate with air and get larger because the diaphragm is allowing it because of the room that the diaphragm is making in this upper rib cage area. Inhale, exhale. So during the exhale, the diaphragm goes back up into the cavity. The rib cage moves back in because of the intercostal muscles and there's not a lot of room for the uh, lungs to hang out. So air comes out and expels. Let's look at that again. Good. So yes, as you can see, the diaphragm is dome-shaped and it does, it is also malleable. Okay. And so this is where uh, an insert for the esophagus to your stomach would go, or rather to your larger and smaller intestines. I'm not sure about this insert, <clears throat> but this I think would be also where your um, vertebrae would go as well. So you see the dome shape from the back. Lovely. Now we're including our intestines, yeah, or our stomach area, that abdomen. The lower abdomen here. Great, I said that, thank you. Now what I wish that this illustration did was to include the movement of the abdomen coming in and out. Because as you inhale, we should expand everything, not only the rib cage through the intercostal muscles, but also the lower abdomen coming out. Now I call it, <clears throat> because I work in a university setting, I call it getting fat so that I don't offend anyone, but you cannot say that to your younger people. So we can also say we can expand from the belly during inhalation. Right, I'm going to do that again through our surprise. So we're going to walk through the door. Surprise! Again, let's do it again. Exhale, exhale out all the air. Make sure that everything is still malleable and surprise! Yeah, good. And everything kind of expands really easily and quickly. Going back to our video here. Um, yes, yeah, so we're still looking at the ribs and the everything's expanding <clears throat> as you inhale, going through intercostal muscles, so forth and so on. Great. So again, I have posted these um, videos for you in our discussion. Um, let's see. So, nope, ahead of myself. Let's go there. Good. So, let us talk about some exercises that we can do in order to enhance our breathing capacity. Great. So, <clears throat> I want you to, um, actually touch your rib cage. Just hang out where it is. How far does it go up? How far does it go down? So we have um, our breastplate here, if you will. Yeah, and then kind of, and then our ribs kind of keep going. And I want to see myself as I do this one. So don't tell you wrong. Great. <laughs> so rib cage, and then it, my stomach kind of goes right here and then the rib cage is right here still going on the outline and the rib cage goes far kind of far down right and the ribs are actually as you see in this illustration attached to the back so you can actually keep filling those ribs <coughs> so yeah good now let's now you can either um, hang out with your ribs either by monitor your ribs by either doing this action. I'm not a fan of this action just because it gets my doing that thing, which I'm not a fan of during singing. <laughs> Dancing. Hey, it's another story. But I like to do this personally, but you might you might like this. Chicken dance, right? I'd rather have your palms on your rib cage though, instead of the back of your palms. 
So I like to do this. So I'm literally touching my rib cage here and here. And let's just inhale, like our surprise. Three, two, one. Good. Let's do that again. Now your lower abdomen or that belly should be coming out, should be distending <clears throat> when you do the surprise. Let's do it again. Expel everything out. Relax. Three, two, one. Yes. Lovely. Now let's try to do it slower. Okay. So let's do it in four counts. <clears throat> and go. One. Good, now fill that rib cage up. If you cannot fill the rib cage up, another way we can do that is to put our, raise our hands in the air. We can either do this way or this way. But this literally gets the rib cage up and out. Now, of course, be mindful. Don't rest your hands on your head, please. Keep those hand, keep those, that head free. Lovely. Still be malleable. So even up here, let's move around a little bit. Walk like Egyptian. Great. <laughs> Lovely. <clears throat> also, your, don't forget about your lower body. We should not be doing our sway back ghetto booty posture. Rather, it should still be malleable and relaxed. Let's do our um, four inhalation. And here we go. Great. Now you should really feel the rib cage in here when it expanded, right? in here and also on the side. Good, good. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you can do that with your class, your choir. You can also say, hey, let's hug. Let's do a big old bear hug or pretend to hug a huge tree. And we're going to inhale. Here we go. Make sure, sorry, before I go on, that our shoulders are not here, but they're here. Hey, look at them. All right, let's do it. So let's inhale in four counts. One. And you should still feel that inhalation there. Good. Now let's do our surprise and hiss everything out for a very, 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 very long time. Not a loud hiss. Here we go. Surprise in three, two. Good. So there are a few things to note here. First of all, at the beginning of the lecture, I said that we need to keep that feeling of inhalation during exhalation. Why? So we already, let's go back to our word document. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and pushes back against the lungs. The diaphragm pushes back and relaxes rib cage by the internal and intercostal muscles contracting the viscera comes back in. So that's our natural inhalation, but we want to be able to sing long phrases and play long phrases. So the way in order to do that <clears throat> is to counteract the natural order of those intercostal muscles contracting and try to leave them out as long as possible. Think about it. The viscera during exhalation goes, relaxes, and goes back into its little alcove, right? Pushing air out of the lungs, which that's naturally going to happen. But what also happens is that the rib cage also collapses, which also goes down on our lungs. And we want to keep those ribs up and out for as long as possible during the exhalation phase. So let's try that again. Let's do the exercise where we are doing the surprise through, through the bear hug and then also hiss. <clears throat> and as we're hissing, I want you to really try to keep those that rib cage out. To me, it feels like if I had a, sometimes uh, it, some, it feels like I have a handle right here and someone's like, you know, doing this whole thing. It's like, oh my gosh, 
I'm not doing this, right? We're not getting that sway back position. Rather, and it's like someone's just kind of taking a handle and moving it forward for me. So let's try the exercise again, please. Get all nice and loose. You can still do this sitting down or standing up, whichever you prefer. Or in a group of people. Ha ha ha. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so let's get everything out. Relax. Hug our bear. We're going to do three, two, one, surprise, and then hiss. So three. Good, very good. <clears throat> now, um, at the end of the expiration part, your muscles here in your throat might still, might want to feel like they're closing in on you. So that's our natural fight or flight sense, right? Um, that's when humans just like, oh my gosh, stop or go, right? Try to fight that and then your breathing capacity will also increase. Good. So, um, that's another exercise. Another exercise that you can do is Farinelli. So Farinelli was a castrato. Can you spell castrato? Good. <laughs> and <clears throat> He was in, mm, I think, the 15, 1600s era. Um, he was a castrato tenor. If you don't know what that means, look it up. But he was also a womanizer. So that's kind of conflicting information, but we're going to move on. What the castration did to him was it stopped him growing at a very stopped his, excuse me, stopped his hormones at a very early age. So he did not get an Adam's apple. <clears throat> um, he basically stayed like, a, it sounded like, the reports say, that it sounded like a very loud, reinforced male soprano sound. So I have falsetto, oh, right? And that's very light and airy and oh, right? But it sounded like, crazy. Almost what you think maybe it was like a, a Wagnerian singer would sound like today. <laughs> Soprano. So, um, but even after he was castrated, he was still growing. Now, he was a shorter dude, because he couldn't grow that much, <laughs> but he was also um, really good at his breathing capacity, because there are like really tiny sketch drawings of this dude with the Superman complex, right? So he has this huge, broad shoulders that go down to this tiny little waist and then tiny little legs. <laughs> kind of like Frakwa from Shrek. That's funny. Anyways, so yeah, this dude. And he has this broad chest, and so he's he was known not for <clears throat> being a castrato tenor, because that was so common back in the day. And not for his range or anything, but for his long phrases, for being able to sing those long phrases. So, um, and there's also a movie on him. I think it's just called Farinelli. Give it a watch. There's some good music and some good singing. Anyways, the Farinelli um, exercise. Farin or box breathing box breathing because um, you'll inhale for four, let's say a count of four, sustain for four, exhale, exhale, this four, four beats, and then um, relax for four beats. So, <clears throat> so it's 
And it's called box breathing because you inhale for four, sustain for four, exhale on a hiss for four, relax for four. I'll do that again. So you'll inhale for four, sustain for four, exhale for four, and relax for four. It becomes this box of a shape. So let's practice that now. Let's put a, you would have a metronome probably at 60. <laughs> <clears throat> but for now, I will just snap so. Let's relax everything, make sure that everything's still malleable. Um, you can do your hug your tree thing here. You can put your arms up. So let's do put our arms up, make sure that our muscles are still malleable and loose. Great. So let's begin with nothing in our lungs. Breathe everything out and go. Good, I'm gonna stop there. So I've inhaled for four counts completely, yeah? And that's gonna be hard, because this is gonna be like a, a very, right? It's not our catch breath, it's not our surprise breath. And the reason that we want to um, practice inhaling slow is that sometimes you'll just need to, as you're in choir, or whatever you're, whatever on something you're playing, and you need to make sure that you just feel that inhalation process. You know, when you inhale, everything just kind of relaxes. Even when my lower abdomen, my lung, my um, my intestines, my stomach comes out, I still feel when they come out, I still feel like the pelvic floor, like down here. Also, like there's a pressure down there, which means I'm doing it right. Now, the point of the sustain is so that we can get this rib cage out. Now, I don't say hold. I don't like saying the word hold. Because to me, hold implies that you're holding something, which implies that you're using tension to hold it with. Rather, I like to say sustain. Sustain with your mouth open in that surprise leaving the throat alone, leaving the vocal folds alone, leaving everything just malleable. And then exhaling on a on a hiss. Now, the shorter we exhale, the louder the hiss. The longer we exhale, excuse me, the softer the hiss. So, let's do the entire exercise on four counts. I'm going to be there everything out. And why don't you join me? I'm going to put my hands above my head, not touching my head. Making sure that I'm still loose. Oh, let me play my computer. Before it dies, don't die. Alright. Let's do it. So, breathe everything out. Here we go. And relax. Two. Let's do it again. Good. So a way that we can really get the air out is by really, literally pushing on the stomach in. Right? Which will literally get that air out. Good. Now, sometimes we'll want to do that on the longer hisses when you get to like 8, 9, or 10. You'll just want to leave that belly alone so that we can get that, the, that, that elongation of the phrase going. One more exercise and then um, we'll move on. So, um, I learned this in high school and basically it's just, um, well, let's, sorry, I'm going to do two exercises. So, it's just like a, it's a dog pant. So... Let's do that again, without the sound, so. Good, and that just gets our belly very, very malleable, very bouncy, right? So that we can get control of it. 
we can get control of the belly because we do not sing with our diaphragm. We do not sing with our diaphragm. Why? Because the diaphragm is involuntary. So we control the diaphragm by inhaling, right? By sucking in air, by... And then the, the diaphragm does all these things for us. It distends our belly, it um, moves the ribcage out of the way so that we can get more air through the lungs. But we do not voluntarily control the diaphragm. I can voluntarily control my hands, my blinking eyes, my ears, not my heartbeat, not my brain, and not your diaphragm. But in order to control the diaphragm involuntarily, we can voluntarily control this belly. <laughs> Good, all right. Um, and then the last, what was the last thing I was gonna do? I done forgot. Ah, we'll talk about it, I'll think about it. Great, lastly, let's go to Course Den. And I wanna talk about the Dowland that you should start learning. So go to Course Den content, uh, and it should be right here, rubrics. How to learn a vocal piece. Look at that for next time. We'll go over how to learn a vocal piece and make you might even find it useful for your own music and then a PDF of the Dowland is here. Okay? All right, y'all. It's good to see y'all through the camera. I'll see you in class. Bye.